guys, if you've been a member of the channel for a while, you'd know that. So we basically did full breakdowns of each Rammstein song, literally each Rammstein song that exists. We did a breakdown of. Uh, go and check out my Rammstein playlist uh, if you are in the mood to binge watch some of those breakdowns. Um, today we're going to be checking out the Rammstein story do host. Uh, this is a little documentary that I'm going to divide into two parts. Today's going to be part one, and then probably tomorrow I'll do part two. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm checking out more behind the scenes content, more documentary types, um, or documentary type like I don't know. I don't, I I pretty much screwed up my sentence there, but anyway, I've checked out most of their music. So um, there's no music left, except if they bring out another album, hopefully. But there's no music for me to react to. So yeah, we're going to check out this Rammstein story. Uh, if you're new to the channel, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let's get to it. World War II. America, Britain, and France join forces with the Soviet Union to oppose the Axis powers of Nazi Germany, including Italy and Japan, from 1939. Following the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945, the Allied groups occupied different sectors of the country. It was split into two sections, with the Soviets forming the German Democratic Republic in the yeah. east and the remaining three occupying forces, the USA, the UK, and France, forming the Federal Republic of Germany to the West. Well, that's pretty new to me. I, I'm, I'm pretty clued up in World War II itself, but it's World War II not as much, so. Whilst Berlin would geographically fall under the powers of the Soviet GDR, yeah. Berlin itself was divided between the GDR and the Federal Republic. Uh -huh. So East Berlin would be occupied by the GDR and West Berlin would be occupied by the Federal Republic of Germany. Right, and we all, as we know, all of these guys were from the... Was it the com well, were they communist side? Communist side. Uh, these guys, all the Rammstein members were from, you know, the, the communist side, the east side. The Federal Republic of Germany. The citizens of Berlin to the east were not happy with low wages and the new communist ideology yep. they were being forced to live by. Naturally, many Germans started to travel west where the Federal Republic offered its people higher salaries, more consumer goods, greater freedom, and also were not under the watchful eye of the Stasi, a state-led security service operated by the GDR yep. to basically spy on East Germans to ensure loyalty to the new communist regime. Crazy, 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 crazy times. And you know, those those times back then were, you know, it obviously you had the war and everything, which was just terrible. I do feel like, you know, that whole age of society, they just had more class and more discipline than the society. I don't know about you guys. That's irrelevant to the video, but I'm just mentioning. In 1961, the German Democratic Republic of East Germany started to build a dividing wall around the city of Berlin to stop any citizens from leaving. This would become known as the Berlin Wall. A political, ideological and physical divide would now represent the lives of the German people for almost three decades. This would become the historical setting for one of the most unique metal bands of a generation. The mo I would say the most unique. Rammstein. Yes. And this is their story. Let's go. Hey, Simmers. Looking for a cool back tattoo? Get custom content on CurseForge. Are we saying there's a chance that when we really? push that <laughs> button, we destroy the world? There we go. Oh, that looks like a cool movie, actually. But anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't say one of the... I would say the most unique. Richard Sven Krusper, born 24th of June, 1967, is where we begin our journey into Rammstein. At the age of 14, he would buy a guitar whilst visiting Czechoslovakia. And although he simply planned to sell it for profit when he returned to Germany, he met a girl who seemed to be impressed with the simple fact that he even owned one. Oh, this opened oh. his eyes into the world of becoming a musician. Kind of bored. All right, Richard. All right, Richard. Well, that, that's actually a very cool backstory. You know, I buy and sell guitars and they end up, ended up, you know, being in one of the most successful metal bands of all time. Owned one. This opened his eyes into the world of becoming a musician. 
kind of bored and I was sort of walking around and I saw this music shop and in East Germany you couldn't buy any uh, instruments. It was really hard to get instruments there so I felt like okay I could buy an acoustic guitar and like make some money on it you know because I was quite uh, on myself at the age of 14. Then I went back to the camp where we were at our tent and there was this girl asking me you know because she saw me with the guitar to play something for her but I couldn't and I told her I can. To make <laughs> myself clear I put the guitar I was, I was like strumming on the guitar and somehow on her face made the impression to me that she liked what she was hearing even though I couldn't play so hey. I think there was a key moment to start to make music. Bonus. A few short years later in 1985 at the age of 18 he would move from his small hometown of Schwerin located east of Hamburg to Berlin where despite the political and economic issues was still an appealing location for many Germans to relocate to. I've heard, you know, the song Radio is based on the, the, the whole struggle with music in, in the part of, you know, Germany they lived in. Um, because it was so controlled by the state and by the government, you couldn't really listen to any type of music, right? He squatted in a small apartment with his drum kit and guitar and describes it as a very lonely time. This loneliness Richard speaks of, though, is something that has followed him from an early age, ever since the divorce of his parents. Oh. He said that being a second child, his mother focused all of her love and attention on, on his brother, which left him feeling isolated, despite having a good relationship with his father. From these early experiences, he only ever felt worth something when creating something which is most likely what gave him the drive and passion to pursue a project such as Rammstein in the first place. Yeah. Not only was it incredibly difficult to buy musical instruments at this time for Germans, most young children were not given the opportunity to pursue a career in music, as sport was very much the focus. Even his parents were against the idea of him taking up the profession of a musician. They wanted him to continue training as a wrestler. However, he would stay in East Berlin for a couple of years, practicing music and playing around on his instruments in the hope that one day it might lead to something bigger. I didn't even know Richard was involved in this. I knew Till was involved in, in, in swimming. He was a pretty good, uh, pretty good swimmer back in his day, but I didn't know Richard was. That's new to me. ...around on his instruments in the hope that one day it might lead to something bigger. Life would take a drastic turn for him in East Berlin. In October of 1989, there was a political demonstration taking place. Richard was simply leaving the train station to go and visit a friend when he suddenly found himself surrounded by police. Shit. They thought he was taking part in the demonstration, <laughs> so he was arrested and interrogated for six days. Oh, I was, I was actually, at this time, there was a new party growing called The Noise Fall. And there was a lot of demonstration going on and I was trying to visit a friend and I came out of a subway station where I got all of a sudden around a circle uh, from police and took me on a truck or a police car and drove me away and there was a six days of like interrogation you know you had to stay on a wall for hours and you wouldn't move they would hit you and obviously you know wow. they wouldn't believe me because the story that I told him you know there thought that it was true so I never you know, if that isn't bad, like, I don't know what it is. wouldn't right. believe me because the story that I told him, you know, there thought that it was true. So I never actually planned to leave the country. But after that, I felt like somebody was strangling me. I felt like I couldn't breathe anymore. So I decided to escape from east to west. A traumatizing ordeal. He decided to escape from east Germany to west Germany. Little did he know the Berlin Wall was about to fall. There we Before go. Before Rammstein, some of his early musical projects included Das Elegante Chaos, formed in 1987. Orgasm Death Gimmick, I've heard of And before, yeah. Orgasm Death Gimmick, formed in 1991. But he would soon discover his future singer, Till <laughs> Lindemann. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in November of 89, Richard moved back to his hometown of Schwerin where Till was working as a basket weaver and playing drums for a band called First Ash, roughly meaning First Ass in English. <laughs> During this period, Richard lived First, with... What went through your mind or how intoxicated did you have to be to say, I'm going to call my band First Ass? I mean, bruh. <laughs> ...working as a basket weaver and playing drums for a band called First Ash, roughly meaning First Ass in oh, English. God. During this period, Richard lived with Oliver Riedel and Christoph Schneider, who were in bands of their own. And sometime during 1993, he convinced Oliver and Christoph to start a new project with him, Rammstein. and then persuaded Lindemann to join on vocals, 
after apparently hearing him sing whilst working. Hold Paul up. Land Am I tripping? Was that is that a ginger till? Or is this just because of the, you know, the aging of the photo? Maybe it's it's actually, but damn. Okay. Off to start a new project with him and then persuaded Lindemann to join on vocals after apparently hearing him sing whilst working. Paul Landers and Christian Lorenz were members of a band called Feeling B, active from 1983, and were also recruited into Richard's new musical venture. Fuck. It's unclear exactly when the full Rammstein lineup would be complete, but we do know that Krusper, Riedel, Schneider and Lindemann entered a Battle of the Band style competition in 1994 with a demo tape, and it seems as if they were called Temple Prayers at the time. They won the competition with the prize being one week of recording time in a professional studio. They would officially settle on the name Rammstein in 1994 and began playing some local shows. I've heard you know, there was a there was an accident, right? With the I don't know, was it a I don't know, was it a hot not a hot air balloon? What do you call? I think it was a hot balloon accident. There's a place or an air force base somewhere, I think in Germany called Rammstein. Also, please correct me if I'm wrong. Please correct. I'm going off of memory here. Um, and I and someone told me that you know they kind of based their name off of that. I don't know how true that is, but if someone knows you know, where they exactly based the name of or how they got to that name, let me know for interest. The name itself would be taken from the air show disaster that occurred on Sunday, the 28th of August, 1988, at the USAF Rammstein Air Base in West Germany. Yes. Where three aircraft... Ah, oh, I'm glad to see my memory is not, not misleading me. Yes. ...and began playing some local shows. The name itself would be taken from the air show disaster that occurred on Sunday the 28th of August 1988 at the USAF Rammstein Air Base in West Germany. Okay, so it wasn't a hot air balloon, it was actually... Three aircraft collided and resulted in the death of 70 people as wow. the wreckage exploded and sent fireballs into the crowd. It's crazy. On January the 4th, 1995, Rammstein would secure a record deal with an independent label in Berlin called Motor Music and start work on their debut album, Herzleid. Man. I mean, one big break, one week of studio recording time got them that big break. The winning of that competition got them that big break. It just, it just shows you th things can fall if you just stay imagine if you could oh, design sick. products as quickly as your ideas flow even before Rammstein began the members faced difficult times ahead Germans were not allowed to be unemployed in East Germany you could face jail time if you didn't have a job in the German Democratic Republic Well, I mean... You could face jail time if you didn't have a job in the German Democratic Republic. Wow. This made it difficult for many musicians to focus on their passion. Flacker had completed an apprenticeship as a toolmaker, Paul worked as a boiler worker in a library, and even said that it was almost forbidden to make music as an amateur and not work at the same time. Wow. It was also quite difficult for anyone to get information about modern trends such as fashion, music and other Western culture. Yeah. After the fall of the Berlin Wall though, this opened up a whole new world of opportunity for the six budding German musicians. They had a general idea of the music they wanted to create. Richard said he wanted to fuse their hands to machines, whilst Christoph describes the early Rammstein concept as monotonous, slightly boring, heavy music. In the beginning, Richard was very keen on trying to replicate American styles and seeing if it could be absorbed into the music he was writing at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, some of the some of the sounds obviously did come from those popular metal bands in America, but I do think that eventually it morphed into something much more unique, something that we have not seen before. That's why I say most unique band metal band in the world but quickly realized that it simply wouldn't work till even tried to sing in english however they decided that the german language would not only help to distinguish them from others 
it was also much easier for them to convey Dude, the content yeah. of their lyrics using their mother tongue. Singer Till would also take a very simple approach when it came to writing lyrics. He would generally write hard sounding lyrics for harder riffs and softer lyrics for softer, softer riffs. Yeah, yeah. Rammstein as individuals had a variety of influences when it came to music. Till Lindemann's first record was Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. <laughs> Welcome to my nightmare. Along with one of his favorite albums being Stormbringer by Deep Purple. Wow. And he was also a big fan of Chris Isaac. Hey, we're getting it. Yeah, this is, you know, some of this is new to me. I knew about the whole the air show thing. I knew about, you know, some of the inf some of the, the early influences. Did not know. This is pretty And he was also a big fan of Chris Isaac. Richard was into American punk band Dead Kennedys as well as the English electro band Depeche Mode. Yeah. And Oliver Riedel remembers hearing his mother playing Bob Dylan non stop at home, whilst keyboardist Flacker took cues from German 80s pop rock band Die Arts. It seemed that Motorhead also played a part in the development of the Rammstein sound as Richard remembers their live show leaving a lasting impression on him. Rammstein started out as a side project for all members involved. However, it quickly developed into a serious creative process. Despite the fact none of them thought anyone else would be remotely interested in what they were producing, yeah. their debut album was just around the corner, and it was about to send shockwaves through the music industry. All right, guys, so... Part one, we're going to stop it there and leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. But um, it's interesting, man. It's I know I knew the kind of the environment that, that they grew up in. I knew about that. But, you know, I didn't know about all of the musical influences uh, early on, you know, when Rammstein first started. I, I didn't know they were, you know, kind of inspired by Motorhead and by, uh, I, don't, I always, uh, what, what, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. From always, I always an shit. 80s pop rock. And Oliver Riedel remembers hearing his mother playing Bob. Richard was into American punk band Dead Kennedy. Yeah, see, all of this I didn't know. It's pretty interesting to, to get a glimpse into some of their early influences and early inspirations. But yeah, we're going to continue part two of the documentary very soon. If you are new to the channel and if you like this, please leave a like on the video and I'll be seeing you next time.